Hey everybody, um, today's teaching is one that is very close to my heart um, because it's something that impacted me for many years and I believe it's one of those things that kept me from receiving the healing that I knew that I had. So uh, today's focus is going to be um, uh, to a very specific group of people, okay, but, but don't not listen to it if you don't fit into this category because there will come a time where you will fit in or you will know somebody who fits into this category. So we're going to talk about forgiveness today and there's a lot of teachings out there about forgiving others, about receiving the forgiveness of God, but I want to talk to you today about forgiving yourself. I think sometimes that is the hardest thing to do. So the people I'm talking to today are the ones who have done something in the past that has either hurt someone or has physically harmed their body. And now their mantra is, and maybe it's your mantra is, I can't forgive myself. I just can't forgive myself. And by the end of today, I'm going to show you that you can forgive yourself and I'm going to show you how to do it. And I can share this with you because I lived it. I know it works, so that's what we're, uh, that's what we're talking about today. So let me take you kind of to the beginning of where this mindset of not forgiving myself began, okay? So in 2011, I had been following Christ for four years, radical, after him for four years. Um, before that point, for about 15 to 20 years, I was a born-again believer, spirit-filled, but I lived like the world. Uh, I knew it was wrong, but I did it anyway because this is what I wanted to do and I was going to do it. So, But by 2011, I had repented. I had changed my mind. I was now following Christ with all of my heart, all of my soul, all of my mind. Um, and in 2011, I was laying on the doctor's table and she had just diagnosed me with lupus. And that why me question, you know, comes up. But what I want to focus on, because we've talked about that in some of the other teachings, but what I want to focus on is that I asked God, why now? Why me? And I got one sweet, gentle word from him that I misinterpreted, which led me to hold on to the sickness and disease that was in my body for another two years before another three years before I received my healing. And that word was sin. And at the moment, I, what came to my mind was that my sin, uh, my sin uh, had brought all of the, had opened the door to the enemy, okay? And while that is true, because sin does have consequences, and we'll, we'll look at that today too, sin does have consequences, I also interpreted that to mean, God did not say this, he said one word, but I expounded for him, right? I took that to mean because, Teresa, you brought all of this stuff into your own body, that it was your fault, that you now have to suffer with it, you now have to pay for it, you did it, so you deserve it, so you have to live with it. And that, I believe, is a mindset that so many believers have today because they allow the enemy to heap guilt and condemnation uh, on them using the scripture against them. Well, you reap what you sow, right? Um, you know, after my, in my first marriage, I cheated on my first husband and I hurt him badly and he was a wonderful man. After that, I said, I can never forgive myself for that. And then in my second marriage, when my husband cheated on me multiple times with multiple men, there's that little thought, well, you reap what you sow, right? The enemy is really good at twisting the word to use against the believer. 
So I want to start today by looking at one of those verses that um, I believe is one of the main verses that the enemy uses to condemn, to keep, uh, to keep um, believers in bondage, to fear, to sickness, to poverty, okay? We're going to look at that, and I'm going to show you that this is this lie that the enemy has perpetrated, that because you have sinned, because you have brought it on your body, because there is consequences, and I'm going to focus on sickness today, okay, but you can use this to apply to anything. If you, if you made a huge mistake in the past, and now you're in debt, and you're suffering, and you're in lack, you know, the enemy's telling you, well, because you did this, it's your fault, so you just have to live with it, and you have to get yourself out of it okay today we're going to look at sickness say you've done something to harm your body maybe you've been an alcoholic all your life and now you have cirrhosis of the liver or maybe you've been a smoker and now you have uh <clears throat> excuse me now you have lung cancer uh for me it was just continual sins against my body fornication drinking drugs all of those things and that led to Sjogren's syndrome, lupus, hypothyroidism, back issues, carpal, all of these things I allowed into my body. But I didn't have to keep them. And I don't have them now because I learned how to forgive myself. That was one of the big hurdles one of the big obstacles that was in my way, on my way to receiving my healing. So let's look at that first verse today. <clears throat> and it's Hebrews 10. So let's go over there. <coughs> Excuse me. All right, Hebrews 10. And we're going to start reading just verse 26 and 27. For if we sin willfully, after we have received the knowledge of the truth, there remains no more sacrifice for sins, but a certain fearful looking for of judgment and fiery indignation. That does not sound good at all. Which shall devour the adversaries. Okay, so those of us who are out there who have said, I can't forgive myself, I have sinned willfully against God, and the enemy brings up this verse, I want to I want to look more closely at this, okay? Because sometimes when you're when you're in that mindset of I deserve this, it's real easy just to read it and and interpret it as you're feeling at the moment, right? Okay, so if we sin willfully, let's just look at that term right there. Sin willfully. Every single person on this planet has sinned willfully. Whether it's adultery or whether it's taking a pencil from work. We have all, there's only one person in this entire history of this world that has not willfully sinned, and that was Jesus. In fact, the word says all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. That's why we need a savior, right? So if you look at this verse as literally, if we sin willfully, then you have to include everybody in this verse, okay? So because we have all sinned willfully, we have all all have a, a fearful looking for judgment and fiery, uh, fiery indignation. And we are adversaries. Every single person on this planet, if you interpret it this way, every single person on this planet, because they have sinned willfully, is, is looking for judgment and fiery indignation and every single person on this planet born again or not born again is an adversary of God. Keep your finger here. Turn to John chapter 1. This is how you feel. 
this is what it feels like. It feels like you're under judgment. It feels like you're under condemnation. It feels like you're under shame, right? It feels like you are an adversary. Go to John 1. Keep your finger there because we're coming back. John 1, this is what God says about you. Not what the devil says about you. Not what you think about you. But this is what God says about you. John 1 verse 12. But as many as have received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even them that believe on his name. This says, if you received Jesus, if you believed on his name, you are not an adversary, but you are a son of God. You are a child of God. Deuteronomy 26, 18 calls you a treasured possession. So this verse, back in Hebrews 10, 26, 27, if you have believed on Jesus, then you are not an adversary, which means this verse does not apply to you. Who does it apply to? Verse 26 says, if you sin willfully after you have received the knowledge of the truth, this is actually talking about rejecting the gospel. It's not just saying, I know the truth and I sin against it. This is talking specifically about rejecting the gospel, hearing the gospel and rejecting it. If you look down in verse 29, let's read that as confirmation that verse 26 is talking about rejecting Jesus, okay? Of how much sore punishment, suppose ye, shall he be thought worthy who hath trodden underfoot the Son of God and hath counted the blood of the covenant wherewith he was sanctified an unholy thing and hath done despite unto the Spirit of grace. You trample the Son of God and count the blood of the covenant an unholy thing when you reject it as absolute truth. So even though you may have been a believer when you willfully sinned, if you didn't hate God and you weren't doing everything that you could to try to grieve the Son of God and stomp on and trample on what Jesus did for you on the cross, then this does not apply to you. This verse applies to people who have heard the gospel message and have outright rejected the message. This verse, this passage also applies to those who have been born again. Hear me closely. Those who have been born again and Hebrews chapter 6 um, defines this, but the one who has been born again, who has tasted of the goodness of God, who has been filled with the Spirit, who has operated in the gifts, and then completely renounces their faith in Christ. They hate God. They don't want anything to do with them. This is what we would call an apostate, okay? So if you are grieving the fact that you sinned, this does not apply to you. You are not an apostate, okay? So this lie that has been perpetrated by the enemy is, is a lie. This does not apply to you. We all willfully sin unintentionally or intentionally. This first does not apply to the believer who simply isn't living as holy as they want to. Okay? You are not God's adversary. You are a child of God. So now that we have debunked that lie, every time you read that, 26 through 29, you say, I am not an adversary of God. This does not apply to me. Okay? And then we're going to look at what the truth says. So we've heard the lie of the enemy, and now we're going to see the truth of the word. So let's go to 1 John 2, verse 2, and see what the word says 
about your sin. Willful sin, sin done in ignorance, all of it, all sin. Let's see what the words, and we're going to go through about four or five verses here, okay? So let's go to 1 John 2, verse 2. First John 2, 2 says that Jesus is the payment for our sins, plural, and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. All sins, willful sin, ignorant sin, it is all covered because you have accepted the payment that Christ made for you. Okay? Go to Psalm 103. Psalm 103, verse 12 says, As far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed your transgressions, your sins from you. Do you know, as far as the east is from the west, the east will never catch the west. That distance is immeasurable. And that's how far your sin is away from you in the eyes of God. Let's go to Hebrews 8, verse 12. These are important scriptures, guys, and these are what are going to give you victory and enable you to forgive yourself is by focusing on these truths. Hebrews 8, verse 12. God says, I will be merciful to their unrighteousness, and their sins and their iniquities will I remember no more. God doesn't remember your sins, so why should you remember them? He does not remember. When he looks in your ledger, when he looks up your name in his book of life and he looks in that ledger, all he sees is the crimson red blood of his son. He does not see your sin, nor does he remember your sin, nor will he see the sins of the present or the future. Ooh, I love this one. This one's so applicable. Go to Psalm 107. Guys, there is power in this word to set you free if you will take these scriptures and think on them. Psalm 107 verse 20 said he sent his word and healed you and delivered you from your destructions. It says he sent his word. You know, John first, or John 1 tells you that the word became flesh. Jesus is the word. So you could say he sent Jesus and healed you. And then I love this part. And he delivered you. He rescued you. He pulled you out of your pieces of stupid. Okay? He reached in there, rescued you, pulled you out of the pit, forgave you of your sins, and healed you. It does not get any more plain than that. Your sins are forgiven. The ways that you have hurt people in the past... He has forgiven you. The ways that you have hurt your own body, he has forgiven you. Now it's time for you to forgive yourself and let go. You don't have to hold on to that. There's no reason for you to pay penance for what you did when Jesus hung on the cross for you. Let's look at one more scripture. Uh, go to Ephesians 4. Ephesians 4. verse 32. It says, and be kind one to another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, even as God for Christ's sake has forgiven you, or even as God through Christ has forgiven you. So let's, let's rephrase that for today's teaching and be kind to yourself. Be tender-hearted toward your self forgiving yourself 
even as God through Christ, because you have believed on Christ, has forgiven you. Guys, if anyone has willfully sinned and deserved everything that came to them, it was me. From cheating on my first husband to sleeping around to seducing a married man into having an affair with me. Oh my gosh, I can't believe I just said that on camera. <sighs> to drinking like a fish to smoking pot. Sorry, mom, I know you're watching this. I deserved it. But here's the thing, we all deserve something other than grace. But I'm telling you, if this word applies to me and all that I have done, and it does, and I am sitting before you healed and whole, then this is for you also, right? If, if he did it for me, if the word worked for me, it's going to work for you. If I did all of that stuff and I am still healed today because of the word, then that is available for you. But I'm telling you that you have to forgive yourself. Not forgiving will hinder the healing that you need in your body. So let's talk about how to do that, okay? So as I renewed my mind, to the scriptures, to these very scriptures that I just shared with you. When the devil would come and he would tell me that I deserved it, that I'm reaping what I'm sowing, I would pull out these scriptures and I would go over them over and over, sometimes with great tears. It's hard. It's hard to forgive yourself. That's why you have to renew your mind to what is in this book I realized that by holding on to the sickness and disease in my body, I was basically saying that Jesus' blood, his sacrifice, the flesh that was torn from his body as he was mutilated and beaten, it wasn't enough to cover what I had done. It is enough. It is more than enough. And when I was in that state of mind, I was thinking about all of the things that I had done and not what he did for me. You have to change your focus. You have to set your sights on the word. You have to get your eyes off of yourself and your actions and get it onto Jesus and his actions. So getting, getting an understanding of that was, was one of the things that allowed me to receive my complete healing in March of 2014. So despite everything that I had done, Jesus' sacrifice was enough to cover it. Whatever sin has consequences, right? But Jesus' blood covers even the consequences of your sin. Didn't cover just part of it. He covers all of it. All sins forgiven, willful sins included. So lest you think that I am special, which I am, but <laughs> I'm just kidding. So uh, lest you think that I am special, I want to show you a few examples of this in the Word. Okay, first of all, let's just talk about Peter, because we all know about Peter. Peter walked with Jesus close for three and a half years during his ministry. One of his closest friends, a disciple of Jesus himself, right? And then what did Peter do? Peter rejected Christ three times. He walked with Jesus, then he rejected Jesus. But that did not disqualify Peter from going on and fulfilling his purpose in life. I mean, Peter went on and preached the gospel. He was used mightily for the kingdom. He raised somebody from the raised somebody from the dead, right? Healings and miracles done through his hand. This was a man who rejected, literally rejected Christ. And yet that didn't change God's plan for Peter's life. 
Let's look at a, 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 an example of sickness, of sin that caused sickness, and let's see how Jesus handled that. So go to John 5. I pray that these truths are breaking down barriers, they're breaking, holds, breaking down strongholds, they're cutting through the lie of the enemy. Okay, 5 and... We'll read 5 through 14. John 5, 5 through 14. So this is at the pool of Bethesda, okay? And a certain man was there which had an infirmity for 38 years. When Jesus saw him lying there, he knew that he had been a long time in that condition. And he said to him, do you want to be made whole? The impotent man answered him, Sir, I have no man when the water is troubled to put me into the pool, but while I am coming another step down from uh, down before me. Jesus said unto him, Rise, take up thy bed, and walk. He saw the man there lying by the pool for 38 years, steeped in his sickness, steeped in his infirmity, disease, what doesn't specifically say what it was. Jesus looked at him and said, take up your bed and walk. And immediately the man was made whole and took up his bed and walked, and on the same day was the Sabbath. The Jews therefore said unto him that was cured, it is the Sabbath day, it is not lawful for you to carry your bed. Let's skip down to verse 14. Verse 14, afterward Jesus found the man again, which tells me that he went looking for the man, and he found him in the temple and said unto him, Behold, you are made whole. Sin no more, lest a worse thing come upon you. The man had sinned. It, it can be surmised from this passage that it was his sin that caused the infirmity, that caused the sickness or disease or paralysis or whatever it was that he had been in for 38 years years because Jesus said stop the sinning or it can come back so we know that this man's sin caused the infirmity in his body but notice right in the beginning Jesus said I don't care what caused it I just want to heal you he didn't he didn't tell the man well you know you've sinned so I'm gonna let you lay here for a little bit longer until you learn your lesson until I feel like you've adequately paid for the sin that put you in this position he didn't say that at all he just said man I care about you I see that you need healing get up and walk and there it is and then that man had to step out in faith and get up this man who had been laying down for 38 years had to act on what Jesus said Jesus is saying to forgive yourself. Now you have to act on what he said. You also can't skip over the fact that Jesus said, stop sinning or it will come back. Sin has consequences for everyone, believer, unbeliever, for everyone. Grace is there to heal you of those consequences, but you have to repent, which means you change your mind and you go the other direction. You say what God says. You, uh, you say what God says about the situation, okay? Otherwise, you leave that door wide open for the enemy to come back in, bring that same sickness, bring that same disease back into your body because sin is an inroad into your body. So, what we've seen, right? Oh, look at David. Look at David, too, right? David uh, had, a, had an affair with a married woman, and then he killed off her husband. And yet he was still called a man after God's own heart. God is not looking on the sin, okay? He's not looking at it, so you need to stop looking at it. So he's already forgiven every piece of stupid that you've ever done that you'll ever do he doesn't want you to keep looking back and remembering he doesn't want you in bondage 
to your past actions. You cannot change your past, but you can change your future by changing your focus, by looking ahead. So the, despite the, the sins of your past, God still has a plan for you. He has healing for you. You are healed. It doesn't change that. The, the plan that he has for you, the good plan that he has, was good in the beginning and is still good today and is still good looking forward. So you are free to let go of the past and walk into the future and he doesn't want you holding on. So how do you do it? First of all, you do it by focusing on what the word says about you, not what the enemy says about you, not how you feel about you. You look at what the word says about you. And then you do what Paul did. So let's take a play from Paul's playbook. Go to Philippians. Guys, I'm not saying this is easy, but I'm saying this will work. Okay? Anytime the enemy comes, you, you shout him down with what the word says about you. You go back to those scriptures, Hebrews 8, 12, Psalm 107, 20, Psalm 103, 12. You go back to those and look at those. So let's see what Paul, let's see what Paul says about forgiving yourself. And we're going to read Philippians 3. Twelve through 16. And this is Paul again. Not as though I had already attained, either were already perfect, but I follow after, if that I may apprehend that for which also I am apprehended for Christ. In other words, you're just following the plan of God for your life. Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which were behind, do you remember the sins of Paul's past, persecuting the church, all of those things, watching Stephen, approving of Stephen being stoned? Do you remember those things? He says, I forget those things which are behind and reach forward unto those things which are before. Both of those things take effort. Reaching forward takes effort. He says in verse 14, I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ. Let us therefore, as many as be perfect, be thus minded. What is thus minded? Forgetting the things which are behind and reaching forward unto those things which are before. And if anything be ye otherwise minded, God shall reveal even this unto you. So when those thoughts come, when you start thinking of, of the things that are behind, it says God will reveal that you need to look forward. He will prompt you. The Holy Spirit will prompt you. He will show you. Stop looking behind. Start looking ahead. Verse 16, Nevertheless, whereto we have already attained, let us walk by the same rule. Let us mind the same thing. Again, admonishing you to forget the things which are behind and reach forward unto those things which are before. Guys, there is healing in forgetting and forgiving. Forgetting takes a long time. I still haven't forgotten all of those things that I've done. But I look at them differently now. You know, that was, that was a different person back then. They are not me any longer. I made a mistake. I had lots of mistakes. And I had to let them go. If you will meditate on these verses and then purpose to do as Paul did, you will walk free of the mistakes of your past, and you will be able to forgive yourself. Amen. So guys, let me pray for you today. Hallelujah. Father, may the eyes of those watching, may the eyes of their understanding be enlightened, and may they see the deception they have been living under. May the truth of the word presented in this teaching break through and tear down the strongholds of the lie of the enemy. May they forgive 
themselves and let go of the past as they see the blood of your beautiful son cover it. May they reach forward and focus on the life that is before them, dropping the chains of bondage as they go. Minds healed, bodies healed. In your precious name I pray. Amen. Guys, if you have been blessed by these teachings, if, you, if your life has been changed, if your life has been impacted, please send me a message. Uh, go on the website, put a testimony down there. Uh, but I also want you to prayerfully consider partnering with Fully Known Ministries. Um, when the world opens, we are going into the world. And in order to do that, we need partners and we need supporters. We need prayer support. We need financial financial support. So I just ask you to, to consider that. If you would like to give, if you would like to become a partner, go to FullyKnownMinistries.com and uh, you can go to the donate page and you'll get instructions there. So I love you guys and um, it's time to let go. Forgive yourself.